What's up everyone? I've been able to spend a week with the 2019 Chevrolet Silverado in the high country trim. And after spending a week with it, I've got five likes and five dislikes coming at you right now. Before I get this thing started, I want you to know that I do have a full review of this vehicle. I have a full review of the 2019 GMC Sierra Denali and the Chevy LT Trail Boss. So if you wanna see more details, driving impressions, all of that, please be sure to check those out. Now, in no particular order, starting with my likes, my like number one is that this is the most tested GM product ever produced. In fact, reading some materials, they say that they've got 7 million miles of real world testing on this truck before it came out for you guys. And they even said that they sent some home or sent several models home with people to kind of work and test out all the bugs and catch anything before it was actually made available to you guys. So it's really good to know that this vehicle is heavily tested and then hopefully it's very reliable and you know stands the test of time. My like number two, that's actually two different things. We've got our rear view mirror. And the rear view mirror on some trims can give you a rear camera. So you can flip a little switch on it and then you can see behind you, you can see, you can zoom in, you can change the brightness, you can move it up and down. It's really handy and I actually leave it on pretty much all the time. The next thing is the surround vision camera. On our big eight inch screen right here, we've got an option for a surround view camera where you can see the sides of the vehicle, the front and the back of the vehicle have a hitch guidance line. It's one of the best all around cameras that I've seen and it's very helpful in tight situations. My like number three is the back seat. They made some improvements to that. And before, this was not on par with like F-150 and Ram, the Tundra, those were all bigger than this in the back seat. But now they've got three more inches of legroom. We've got storage in the actual seat back, which is really nice. We've got AC vents, uh, charging ports, a handle for backseat passengers to get in. Overall, a really awesome package back there. Very practical. My like number four is the ultra practical bed back there. So there's a lot going on back there. It's wider, um, it's class leading in cargo volume. We've still got the large corner step bumpers to make it easy to get back there, which is handy. You've got 12 fixed tie downs rated at 500 pounds per corner, which is just awesome. There's a lot that you can do with it. LED lighting, power tailgate, it's really nice. My like number five is the fact that you've got options. You've got options for trim levels. We've got eight different trim levels. They've got some that are, you know, like the work truck, you've got the mid trim levels. Uh, you've even got more off-road variants like the Trail Boss models, luxurious like LTZ and High Country. And then you've got engine options, powertrain options, six-speed, eight-speed, 10-speed transmissions, a three-liter diesel, a four-cylinder turbo, a couple V8s like the 5.3, the 6.2, even a V6. So you've got a lot of options. Now in no particular order, with my dislikes, my dislike number one, especially coming out of this Sierra right before this, is that we're missing a few things. And a couple things right off the top of my head is that we don't have the multi-pro tailgate that the Sierra has. Some of you might think it's kind of gimmicky, but it could really come in handy sometimes. There's a lot that you can do with it. We don't get it here. We also don't have the adaptive ride control, which in that Sierra, I think it made a big difference in how smooth it was and how it handled in terms of being level around corners. So I definitely miss those in this Silverado. My dislike number two is the dynamic fuel management system. It's just more complex than the active fuel management system, which I'm not a huge fan of cylinder deactivation anyways, and Chevy says that it made it so it should reduce vibration and you really shouldn't even notice it, but the gains are minimal in terms of miles per gallon. In my realized time with this truck, I actually got worse miles per gallon by maybe about a half mile per gallon or one mile per gallon compared to last year's 2018 high country. So more complexities, minimal returns. My dislike number three is the auto stop start system. Now I get it, it's for fuel economy. You can turn it off, but it defaults to turning back on every time you start the vehicle. But in this 6.2 liter, it's really obtrusive. I mean, it's, I'm gonna try to show you guys here in a second. It's the engine is off right now and it's gonna turn on. So it just turned on right there. It's kind of got a mind of its own before I even actually get a chance to, to accelerate. But when you're stopped and then when you want to go, and I have a pretty quick foot from the brake to the gas, it's, you feel it a lot more than I remember in the 5.3 liter. And it's a little slower to where you got to wait a second before you can actually accelerate. And I just, I just don't like it. My dislike number four 
We've got all the safety features, you know, a blind spot, lane keep assist, all that, but there's no radar cruise control. I don't understand why, and you know, some of you don't care, don't really want it, but it's just not available. My dislike number five is the interior as a whole. There's really nothing wrong with it. A lot of you will be perfectly satisfied with it no matter what trim level you get. It's functional, it does work well, but it's more evolutionary than revolutionary when you have Ram who just came out with an awesome interior, very practical, moving stuff. Even the F-150 has a nice interior too. You know, compared to the F-150, I don't know. I haven't been able to spend time in the F-150 yet, but I do get one next week. However, it's just not what I was expecting. I saw it and I was like, is that it, really? Like, it just looks pretty much the same. It's, like I said, it's functional, but I honestly think I prefer the 2018 at least cargo area, center console area more than this 2019. And a couple things on the interior is, at this price point, I was expecting power pedals. We got power pedals on the last interior. The seats, these are 10-way power. I'm pretty sure it was 12-way power before. And the steering wheel is just manual telescoping and tilting when it could be power. Just a couple things that they didn't include. So those are my five likes and five dislikes. Like I said, I do have full reviews of this vehicle, of the LT Trail Boss, the Sierra Denali, so please be sure to check those out. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.